What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so here's the situation we have for you, ladies and gentlemen. We have Tropical Storm Felipe that is currently gradually organizing and developing less gradually, more quickly, as a matter of fact. We have a new area of interest that was just recently tagged in the Gulf of Mexico by the National Hurricane Center. You can see there's a pretty large cluster of thunderstorms starting to gradually build up off the coast of Cuba and the Yucatan over here. And we have a new area of interest that is continuing to quickly organize and develop in the main development region behind Felipe. So this is all stuff we need to keep a very close eye on and we'll keep and we'll go ahead and show you what's going on. Here's what we have going on with Felipe right here. We're going to go ahead and start with that. It currently has winds of 50 miles per hour, starting to uh, continue to organize and develop right here. Here's the situation. Uh, situation. Tropical storm force winds extend out 115 miles from the center. Pressure is 1,001 millibars. Its current location is 16.2 degrees north, 41.7 degrees west. It's moving west at, at or 280 degrees at tw uh, 12 miles per hour. So yeah, this thing has been interesting. Felipe forecast about our wind shear much of the of this week, so that's why they're not really uh, having this thing get up to hurricane strength. It's expected to gradually get up to 65 miles per hour in the next five days. However, I've been talking with my tropical team on Storms United, and they're think and they're showing me a bunch of microwave imagery of of, of Felipe gra organizing quicker than anticipated. This is what Tristan uh, sent me not too long ago, right here. You, I have it right here. This is microwave imagery of Felipe right here, and according to what we're looking at, it already has a mid-level a mid eye at this time as a 50-mile-per-hour tropical storm, so this is something we'll have to continue to keep an eye on, see how resilient this thing uh, gets, but uh, and uh, how resilient this gets, rather. That's what we have. Here's the, uh, the forecast advisory. Pr is pretty much the same. And in the discussion, little change in intensity is forecast with the storm during the next couple of days as increasing shear is forecast to otherwise con uh, uh, counteract a conducive environment. There is a variety of solutions after this point, with some models showing a stronger fi uh, a Felipe finding low a low-level shear environment, while others suggesting the storm succumbs to the shear of an upper uh, and from an upper-level trough. Excuse me. There are no easy answers to this or anything like that. So that's pretty much what we have. Uh, going on it's currently moving it's currently moving at once again 12 miles per hour this is a situation we'll need to keep a very close eye on as time continues to go on but we have two new areas of interest that we need to pay attention to as well we have this one that's off the coast of the yucatan peninsula that just recently got tagged by the national hurricane center and this says follows Disorganized showers and thunderstorms over the southeastern Gulf of Mexico are associated with a surface trough of low pressure and an upper-level trough. Further, further development, if any, is expected to be slow to occur over the next few days while the system moves slowly westward. By the middle of this week, upper-level winds are forecast to become too strong for additional development. 48 uh, hours chance of, of, of formation, 10%, same in the next seven days. But the fact that the NHC is really tagging this, and the fact, and due to its proximity to land, this is something we need to pay very, very, very close attention to as time continues to go on. And then we have this area, which is in, now Invest 91L. Here's what we have: a small area of low pressure located several hundred miles uh, south uh, southwest of the Cabo Verde Islands continues to produce disorganized shower activity. Environmental conditions are forecast to be conducive for gradual development, and a tropical depression could form around the midweek while the system moves west-northwestward across the central tropical Atlantic. 20% chance of formation in the next 48 hours, 60% chance of formation in the next seven days. This was at 40% earlier this morning. Now we've jumped up to 60. I think it, and if we go ahead and go back to the archives, the tropical weather out looks we can go ahead and give you a, a better evolution of this this is where we were 20 this is where we were 24 hours ago we are only at a 20 percent chance of development at that point then it went uh, then it went uh, it stayed there by the 8 p.m then it stayed at 2 a.m but then this morning we woke up to a 40 percent chance of formation and now we're at 60 so this is a very big situation that is going on this thing is organizing and developing at a much faster pace than a lot of people were probably anticipating at this point and a lot of things are really start are really starting to blow up at this current uh, at this current time and as we get into this active weather period be sure to check out my friends at prestige weather consulting they do one-on-one -on -one individual weather consult uh, consulting centered for your local area for more information you can find a link to their website in the description down below and be sure to use code predictor for 50 percent off your first month 
But with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go ahead and get to the models right here and right now. Here's the European. Here's the Zero Z at this current time. European's been pretty interesting all uh, all this hurricane season. European has Felipe continuing to move more and more to the west, and then the steering currents start to collapse, and a trough starts to develop, and it starts to push further and further to the north. It actually, the European's actually moving a little bit further to the west than a lot of the models were anticipating at this current time. The European hasn't really picked up on any tropical development in the main in the Gulf of Mexico because the NHC just recently tagged on it. They're probably going to run mile runs in the next few hours or so, but but still something to keep an eye on for sure. And then we have this thing starting to gradually organize and develop, although the European has it pretty much killed off for the time being. And then, interestingly enough, Felipe, the European actually has Felipe moving more to the north and then moving more, to, uh, then moving west-southwest after like f after like five days, and then the shear uh, or something like that kills it off. I'm going to go ahead and show the see what the 250 millibar wind shear is. Yeah, even... Yeah, by the time Felipe uh, gets down there, there's not very much wind shear, which that's interesting from how, what the European's going for because the European track does have this thing moving more to the north, but then the high pressure system builds uh, builds up again and it pushes it further to the west, which again we'll have to keep an eye on it. And I don't see how the Europeans killing this off because there's not very much wind shear over there, but that's definitely something we need to absolutely keep an eye on because if that holds and we continue to see more model runs like that, then that could potentially bring a lot of land impacts to Puerto Rico, Hispaniola, the Bahamas. We'll have to keep a huge eye on that. Next model run we're going to go ahead and show you is the GFS. And the GFS has a similar situation, although it do although Felipe continues to move further to the west, and then it just massive it just turns all of a sudden to the north, which I'm gonna be completely honest with. I don't like that turn very much. Just I don't see them moving west and then just starting to move north unless it has a relocation of its center. That's what the GFS is potentially forecasting. However, based off of microwave imagery, it's organizing at a pretty decent pace as we look into this. The, no word on the Gulf on the Gulf Storm yet because this just got tagged by the NHC. And the GFS has this thing continuing to move more and more to the north, contrary to what the Europeans saying. It has this trough just taking this thing out as a, probably a strong tropical storm or a weak hurricane at this point. Next model run we're going to go ahead and show you is the CMC. CMC model has been interesting pretty much this whole time. CMC has a Category 1 hurricane uh, developing. Then a high-pressure system potentially blocks the whole, uh, the movement of this for about a day or so before it, weeks, it weakens out and a trough starts to build out. And it, this thing pushes further and further to the east. So that's a situation we need to keep a very close eye on as time continues to progress according to what we have with the CMC. Next model run we are showing you is the NavGem. NavGem's also been pretty interesting. It's been more, uh, mainly more one of the Western models in the last few days. However, the NavGem has this thing strengthening up to Category 2 Hurricane o uh, Felipe is, rather, at, while out to sea, while pushing further and further to the north. Gets down to potentially Category 3 strength as we get into the subtropical Atlantic Ocean right here. And then the high-pressure system starts to weaken considerably, and this thing continues to move north-northeast at that point in time. So that's what we have going on with the NavGem. Last model we are showing you is the Icon model, which uh, we'll go ahead and show you that. The uh, Icon model has Felipe showing very little organization and development, at least for the time being, before moving, uh, f before moving at this point five days out further and further to the northwest. And then it actually has this new area of interest starting to absor uh, emerge and absorb with Felipe at this point. The Icon actually has this thing kind of stalling out in the Atlantic seven days out. So that's a very, very contrary situation to what we were looking at earlier with with Felipe and with 91L. I mean, if we go ahead and show you this, they are definitely close enough for a Fujiwara effect to take place, but the question is, uh, can uh, will Felipe move uh, faster than this area of interest, or will the area of interest move faster than Felipe to, for this thing to really play out? So this will be a very, very uh, interesting situation. I know I keep saying that like a broken record, but goes to show that this is going to be a very big situation if that happens, because this stuff rarely happens in the Atlantic Ocean. So we'll have to keep a very close eye on it here on the Pat's Path Predictor channel. Next thing we're showing you is conditions. Global sea temperatures 
absolutely impressive. The re big reason I'm concerned about this whole Gulf area right here is because where it's at, it's in an area of 30 plus degrees uh, of, of Celsius or 86 plus degree Fahrenheit of very, very, very warm water. And based off of satellite imagery, it's starting to take full advantage of that because we're starting to see areas of deep convection going into this. So something to monitor for sure. But this, at the current time, that's a, a concern that I am having. With Felipe, it's in an area of 28 plus degrees Celsius. It's going to mostly avoid this whole area of 30 plus degrees Celsius waters, which for now is good news. But the main problem I have with this is the longer this stays untapped, the long, the more of a chance where we, as it go into, we go into October, a Caribbean system starts to develop and takes uh, very much so advantage of these extremely warm waters and starts to bring major, major impacts to maybe Cuba, maybe Jamaica, maybe uh, Hispaniola, Puerto Rico, uh, Central America. Well, this is something that isn't really sitting well with me at this current time, and based off of climate uh, climate models. October's, uh, October is not showing an increase in shear anytime soon, although we do see a shift in the uh, a shift in the tropical initiation, which that is scaring me to the core at this point. So that's what we have with the ocean uh, global uh, sea temperatures. Ocean heat content continues to be very, very high, especially across parts of the Caribbean, where this Gulf stream, uh, this Gulf system is, it's in an area of 150 plus OHC in, at this time. And as it moves west to the Yucatan, it's not giving me any accurate ratings of OHC, but I can guarantee you those are going to be very, very warm. In fact, the OHC across parts of the Gulf of Mexico is very, very high. So this is something we need to monitor. And as for Felipe... Right now, it's in an area of like of like 50 to 75 ocean heat content at this current time. So right now, I'm not particularly concerned about that. It will move into an area of 100 OHC. However, we'll have to see how that wind shear plays out going into this. Once again, with the OHC in the Caribbean, I am concerned that as we get into October, we start seeing systems to organizing and developing in the Caribbean, maybe from maybe from the Central American gyre, like we saw with Adalia, maybe from a tropical wave off the coast of Africa that somehow survives all the way into the Caribbean, and then just basically uses all this warm water and takes full advantage of that. So that's what we have with the OHC. Next thing we're showing you is the wind shear. And the wind shear where Felipe is, to the north of it, is pretty not great. It's around 30 to 40 knots of wind shear to the north of this. But where the center of circulation is right now, it's in a more air, an area of like 20 to 25 knots of wind shear, which is better for it. And that's why we're seeing increased organization and development from my tropical team with this. But we'll still keep an eye on it as it continues to push further west. The wind shear has been pretty stubborn here for the last few days. Definitely something to monitor going forward, and we'll keep you updated on that. The, the Gulf of Mexico area right here, as you can see, we're starting to see a, a very large, uh, not large, but a very decent area of organization and thunderstorm activity. And guess where that's in? That's in a very, very, it's in a very a, a, a large pocket of low wind shear, and that's based off of what I'm seeing, it's taking advantage of that any way it can. And where 91L is at this point, we'll show you the Eastern Atlantic, it's in an area of relatively low wind shear compared to other areas that I have seen in the last uh, in the last couple of days or so. So this is definitely a, a lot of stuff we'll have to keep an update on as potentially with that Gulf Storm, this could be a potential threat to land, especially if it takes uh, advantage of that warm water, insanely wa uh, uh, huge ocean heat content, and insanely low wind shear, around 10 knots or so, as we continue to go into this, it still has plenty of time to organize and develop. So we'll keep you updated here on the Pat's Path Predictor channel. But with that being said, we're going to go ahead and close the video out right here. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you are new. It helps us out, helps us make more videos like these. The goal of this channel is to get more people engaged with weather. Be sure to check out my friends at Prestige Weather. Remember, you're getting 50% off your first month once you use my code PREDICTOR. But with that being said, have a wonderful day, guys. Stay safe.